I'm going to make a video that I wish I had seen about two years ago when I started learning about programming. And I wanted to talk about things like Visual Studio Code and Python and you know how to use them, etc, etc. Now, probably you've seen before in programming, you have to send, you're basically sending commands to a computer. Now on Windows, the old way to do this was to use what you've probably seen before, which is the terminal. The problem with the terminal is that it's not immediately clear to someone who is a noob what you're actually doing. So I, I spent hours and hours and hours trying to get a piece of code to work using the terminal. And it's a way to interact with folders. So what the terminal is, is it's a way to interact with a folder. And basically that's like 99% of what we do on the computer is we interact with folders or we interact with APIs. These are the two things that we kind of interact with, folders and APIs. Now APIs are ways to, it's, it's like a software inside a program. So for example, ChatGPT has an API, Stable Diffusion has an API, et cetera, et cetera. But you're still on your computer, you're mainly interacting with your folder. Now, what Visual Studio Code is, it's called an IDE, but I actually don't know what a IDE stands for. Okay, Integrated Development Environment, that makes a lot of sense. So what I want you to do is download Visual Studio Code, and then I want you to open Visual Studio Code. Now, if you're doing something with Python, you will need to install Python. Um, if you're doing something with uh, React, you'll need to install Node, JS, etc., uh, etc. Et there, there are specific programs that you need in order to execute that language's code. Okay, and for Python, you just literally need to type in Python. Go to python.org, download, and mo I, I would say download like the last version, 3.11 it should be, just because certain things, including ChatGPT, don't, some parts of ChatGPT don't work with the latest version of Python. So this is what you will be met with. This is Visual Studio Code. And what this is, it's almost like a visual way to see code and to see files etc 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 sorry for saying etc so weirdly someone told me that i pronounced it incorrectly and now i'm really weird about pronouncing it um so previously what you could do is you could make a file on your desktop let's say so new folder i can't see my thing i have them hidden i just realized so we'll go in my downloads then so previously what you would do is you would do new folder Hello. What I mean by previously is what you might be tempted to do as a noob. Okay. And then inside the terminal, you would go inside this folder. So you do like CD uh, downloads, CD hello. And then you could add a Python file. So new, I don't know if I think this will work. Hello.py. Oops. I don't know if this will work. I don't know how to make this an actual Python file. And then you would run python hello.py, okay? But the the problem with this is it's really hard to like keep track of what you're doing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So this is why people use Visual Studio Code. So what you can do instead is you can click open file here and you can go to downloads and you can open the hello folder. Sorry, it should be open folder. Go to, <laughs> I always do that. Go to downloads, hello, select folder. And then you can actually make this a pi file instead of being a .txt file. I don't know how to make a pi file outside of Visual Studio Code. So now what you can do is you can interact with different things in the same folder. So here, every time you do new file, hello.txt, I don't know, keywords.txt, oops. Anyway, you understand the point. You can now interact with other things inside this same folder. So if you write a script that says something like open hello.txt and read hello.txt, then when you run the script, it will read from the same folder. Okay, so I'll just show you an example here. 
we'll put in hello.txt or in keywords.txt, let's just put some random keywords and save that. And then I want to write a little script here that says, now write a Python script that opens keywords.txt and prints the results. Okay, so we'll copy the code here and then we'll put this into hello.py and then we'll save it. Now, you can use the terminal, so you can use the command prompt as well if you want. So you can do cd download, cd downloads, cd hello, python hello.py, and then it will just print the keywords, okay? Or you can go to these three buttons here, terminal, new terminal, and then do python hello dot py so you've effectively just written your first bit of python now this might not seem that useful and it i never really understood the use of it until i thought about it in the context of sitemaps now shopify especially has a very interesting sitemap although there are ways to do this with wordpress as well but for me shopify is one of the most interesting uh sitemaps so there's the pages sitemap the collection sitemap the blog sitemap but most importantly there's the product sitemap so what you can actually do is if you have a lot of products, and I work with a lot of clients who so have thousands and thousands of products, two men is a good example, and right click, save as, and then you save this sitemap and drag it across to here. Then you can change what hello.py is doing, but make sure it's always reading whichever file you want it to read. And you can make it do some really, really interesting things. Now, I'm sorry to do the classic, here's one I did earlier, but I, I can't be bothered going through ChatGPT right now. It takes about half an hour for you to go from having the sitemap, knowing that you want to write the site, read from the sitemap, to having a ChatGPT create script, which will search the sitemap and give you all the information you need. So let's say I find a keyword. This is what I've been doing recently with some great success, by the way. Um, you can watch the video from yesterday. This video right here, but actually the workflow is the one where I actually show you how to do it. So I recommend watching the workflow now that you've watched this video to understand how the programming part works of it. But basically find a keyword. Let's say I'm writing about uh, loafers. So all you do is change the included terms and I'll leave this particular script in the description as well. And then excluded terms here. So let's say you have women's loafers and you, you're writing an article about men's loafers, then you can exclude the term women's. And then all this is doing is the exact same thing. It's just a bit more of a complicated script. It's only 39 lines. It's actually a pretty simple script in terms of what it's doing, and it's not doing any scraping. There's only two imports. There's no ChatGPT API. There is no API here at all. And all you do is, same as before, you run the script, this time it's, oh yeah, it's still called hello.py. Okay, so it's given me an error, and it's really important to kind of understand what an error means, okay? So no such file or directory, sitemap products 120. It makes me instantly realize that I forgot to change the name of the file that we're reading from. And this is why I wanted to show at the beginning that it only will read a, a file that's inside this file, uh, folder. So it's looking inside the folder hello. You can see right here it says uh, hello. I'm inside the folder hello. So that's why it didn't work. Even though sitemap underscore one in brackets 20 does exist on my computer. So now if I run this, it should give me a list of all the loafers on my website. So that's one really, really useful thing that I've been able to teach myself in the last, it's taken me about two years, but a lot of that two years wasn't really needed. You just need to kind of understand the basics. You need to understand that you need to use Visual Studio Code to develop things. You need to use ChatGPT to write your code, and it can do a very, very good job of writing code. You just have to be ultra specific. Now, one thing I'll say is if you don't like the output, or if you need to change something, or if there's an error, so let's say, before I really knew what I was doing, I would probably have just put this error into ChatGPT and it would tell me what the error is. So it says this typically happens when the file is incorrect or the file does not exist in the specified location. And yeah, that was the problem. So it, it's correct.
Now, like I said at the beginning of the video, there is another one. There's APIs as well. Um, and APIs are pretty simple to work with as well. So here's another example, this time using an API. Basically, all you have to do is import OpenAI. Um, and then you need to set the OpenAI API key. And then you just need to use the documentation for OpenAI. So if you just go on Google and type in ChatGPT documentation, you can put this into ChatGPT and ask you to write you a specific script that you want. Oh, this is pretty interesting. This is a custom GPT that looks like it's specifically designed to do exactly that. So that's pretty interesting, but I would probably rather just do it myself. So yeah, this is what you need. You can go to the overview, you can go to the quick start, um, just set it up, get ChatGPT to write your script. And then you can see here, you can actually um, have different prompts which are changed together and that will end up writing you content using an auto blogger. Anyway, I just want to talk a little bit about Visual Studio Code, programming, et cetera, et cetera. People think I'm a programmer. I can't even write code. If you asked me to write up to here without any help, I wouldn't be able to. I wouldn't even be able to write the first seven, eight lines of this on my own. So it's all ChatGPT. I just understand how to put things together. I understand how to play with them in the same folder. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I hope this helps. This video was requested. Thanks for watching. I'll see you very, very soon with some more content. Peace out.